All right, guys, so today we're going to be doing lesson 12, which is the product of whole numbers with decimal hundredths. Now, we worked on this last week, if you remember, we did it with tenths. Do you guys remember that? Give me a thumbs up if you remember. Okay, thank you. Now, we're going to do some quick review of equivalent measures, and this is going to help us look towards next lesson, which will be tomorrow. So, 12 inches equals how many feet? Charles, one foot. I like how you corrected me there. Good job. What if I had 36 inches? How many feet do I have? Cooper, um, three. three feet. How did you know? I like how he explained that. I'm going to change it again, and I'm going to give you 48 inches. The equivalent measurement of feet would be what? 48 inches is equal to how many feet? Equals how many feet? London? Four. Thank you, London. Can someone tell me where she got four? How did she know that was four? Not quite. Well, Chloe. Because 4 times 12 is 48. Exactly. She used the information of 12 inches, times it by 4, and she got back to the equivalent of 48 inches. Now, that's something we're going to be using for next lesson. So, just a quick reminder for our brains. Now, thinking back to Unit 1 concepts. Now, that's been a while. Would you guys agree with me? Whew, we've done a lot of math. What if I provided you with the unit form of eight tenths. How do I write that as a decimal and how do I say it? Thomas. Um, zero point we don't call that point. What do we call it, bud? We call it zero, we call it zero and eight tenths. Thank you so much. And, um, It's the placeholder, and, right? Mm -hmm. And when you, um, so that's, and when you're pronouncing it, um, you got to get in that right place value. Exactly. We want to land in the tenths. So let's do that same thing with nine tenths. How do I say it and how do I write it as a decimal? Olivia. How do you say it? Thank you. But let it, let me change it. So we were on tenths. Now we're jumping to hundredths today as a quick review. Fourteen hundredths. How do I write that as a decimal and how do I say it? Cole. Zero and fourteen hundredths. Zero and fourteen hundredths. Did I write it correctly? Did I land in the, the correct place value? Yes. Oh, whew, that was tricky. Now, I'm going to throw a challenge to you. 299 hundredths. How do I write that as a decimal? And how do I say it? Elena. Um, how do you say it, Elena? You're correct. How did you know you needed to kick that two on the other side of the decimal place? Because if you didn't kick it to the other side of the decimal place, it wouldn't have made it out. Exactly. Did you hear she, how she explained that? If she didn't push that out to the ones, we would actually be landing over here in the thousands because the hundredths place is how many places after the decimal? Alexis? Two. two. Way to go, team. Whew. Throwing a lot at you very quickly. All right. Now, I need someone to read the application problem to us. What does it say? Charles. 32 cyclists make a seven day trip. Each cyclist requires space and 3,300 kilometers of food for the entire trip. If each 
because wants to eat an equal amount of food each day. How many kilograms of food will the group Wow. Thank you so much. That said a lot in one word problem. Let's break down what we know. Someone tell me, first of all, how many people do we have going on this trip? Megan. Ooh, 32. That's a big group. Now, a cyclist is just someone who's going to ride a bike for a very long distance. Okay, that's all that means. How long are they going to be gone? Ethan. Oh, man, I bet they're going to be tired. Someone tell me, how much food to keep up their energy are they going to require across each, ooh, not each day, but the entire trip? Ooh. Thomas? Not kilometers. What is it? Kilograms. Thank you. That's okay. It's a quick fix, no worries. So that's for the entire trip. What are they asking us to find? Cole. How many kilograms of food will the group be carrying at the end of the day? Whew. Now, Miss T had to break down this problem in three steps. Are you guys ready to work those steps with me? I think we can do it. So, someone tell me, how much food did we say each cyclist is going to need across their entire trip? Chloe. Eight and 3,300 Now, how many days did we say they're going to be gone? Kaylee? Seven. I want to draw something to help organize my information. So I'm going to draw what they call the tape diagram, if you guys remember. And I'm going to break it into seven parts. Why am I breaking it into seven parts? Alexis? Yes, seven days. Oh, seven days. Okay, I was just checking. Okay. So we're saying across seven days, each cyclist will require eight and thirty-three hundredths kilograms of food. Okay? So each of these boxes represent a day. So day one all the way through day seven. Here's my question for the team. Do we know how much food each cyclist will require per day? Do we know that? No. So someone tell me how are we going to solve for how much food they require per day? Cooper? Not quite. Good try. Appreciate the efforts. Elena? I wouldn't multiply because this is our whole. This is what we're working with. Ava? Divide. divide. I would divide. I would take the total of 8 and 33 hundredths. I would divide it by how many days again? Ethan? Seven, because we want to know the per day amount. All right, now we're getting back in our archives back here in the brain. We've got to do some long division. Now let's look. Looking just at the eight, okay? How many times can seven go into eight? Megan? Once. Someone tell me what's the next step. We just divided, now we need to do what, Charles? Okay, thank you. Three. Bring down the three. Now I need someone else to help. He started us out for the next round. So now we're going to say how many times will seven go into 13? Cooper, one time because we can't go over, right? Okay, Cooper, what is one times seven? Seven. Okay, so he took 13 minus 7, he got 6. Bring down the 3. Then you're going to start the process over again. Remember, that's part of long division. So, now we have 63. 
How many times will 7 go into 63? Thomas? Nine times. Nine times. Thomas, what is 9 times 7? Ran out of space, <laughs> but yes. Okay, you mentioned the decimal. Do I have the decimal in my answer? No, but the decimal goes in between the zero. Nope, it goes right here. Someone tell me, what did we just figure out? Elena? How much food they require per each day. How much they require per day, which is one and nineteen hundredths kilogram worth of food. We're not done yet. Okay? Question? Okay, hold on. Now, step two, listen in. Day five, correct? They said, how much are we carrying at the end of day five? How many days would we have left on our trip if we just ended day five? We just ended day five. How many days do we have left for our trip? Evan. Two. Two. So we've ended day five. Now we need to figure out how much food will be required for two days. You follow me so far? Day six and day seven. We need to think about day six and seven. So what are we going to do with our per day amount in day six and day seven? Cool. I would agree. Who would like to help with the multiplication? Alexis, 2 times 9. 2 times 1. 2 plus the 1 is 3. Yes, ma'am, you're good. Okay, 2 times 1. Alexis, where is my decimal going to go in my answer? In between the two and the three. The two and the three. Someone tell me, what did we just find with two and thirty-eight hundredths kilograms? What did we just find here? Cole? Um, how much food they need in two days. How much food they're going to need for those remaining two days of the trip, right? And that's day six and day seven. But they threw us an extra little something and they said, how much food will the group carry? Well, how many people are in our group? Charles? Charles? 32. 32 people. So what are we going to do with that 32, the group, and the amount of food needed for day six and day seven? I would agree. No, I would times it. Man, that's a lot of food. No, you're good. I agree with you. So, question, could I rename this over here when I set up my multiplication? Could I rename that into my unit form? Chloe? Chloe, why did we rename it? What does that help us do? Exactly. We don't want to be distracted by that decimal. That decimal can be very intimidating, but when we rename it for a quick second, then we can just focus on the multiplication. All right, who would like to help with my multiplication? Sean, what's two times eight? Not quite. I appreciate your efforts. Jade? 16. 16. You're going to put the 6 down. Carry the 1. 2 times 3, Elena? 6. Plus 1. Seven. Thank you. Kaylee, 2 times 2? Four. 4. Someone tell me, we're about to go into something very important. If we don't do this step, we might mess up our answer. What is it? Cooper? Why would I need that zero? What does it tell me I've done? It tells you that you're done with the um, ones place. I'm done with the ones place. So now I can go into what place value? Kaylee? 
the tens place. Ava, what's three times eight? Okay, so I'm going to put the four down and carry the? Two. Ava, three times three? Nine. Plus two. Eleven. You're going to put the one down and carry the other one. Three times two, Ava? Six. Plus one is seven. Yes. Thank you, Ava. Someone tell me, what's that final step to finish out my standard algorithm of, of multiplication? Olivia. Add them. All right, Olivia, here we go. 6 plus 0. 7 plus 4. 11. Put the 1 down, carry the other 1. 1 plus 4 plus 1. 7 plus nothing? Now, question for my team. What am I missing? What am I missing? Megan. My decimal, because when I renamed it, it told me my place value that I needed to focus back in with that decimal. Where's that decimal going to go, my friends? Charles. The decimal's going to go between the, between the 6 and the 1. Which? Ooh, good catch, buddy. So someone tell me, how much food is the team going to carry for day 6 and day 7 of our trip? Alexis? 76 decimal point 1600. 76 and 1600s. Yes, ma'am. Cole? I forgot something. You have to put kilograms. I do need that label because we're talking about our weight of food. <coughs> now, what do you guys notice with the work we had to do here? How many steps did we do? <coughs> Two, three. three. Three steps to answer one question. Way to go, friends. Yes, sir. It'd actually be four because you added it, too. Yes. Now, very good job. That could have been really tricky, but you guys did a fabulous job with that. Give me a thumbs up if you are ready to go into our lesson. All right, friends, here we go. I appreciate what I'm seeing with our efforts. Let's continue. Now, we're going to quickly review what we've been doing, which is estimating our factors to get the estimated product. Then, we're going to do the standard algorithm. Can someone remind us, what is standard algorithm? Whew, that's a big word. London? Not quite. You're on the track. Kaylee? Just the standard problem. Okay. Those big words, they're not going to get us. So, here's our problem. 2 and 31 hundredths times 22. Those are our two factors. I need someone to help me estimate 2 and 31 hundredths to the nearest whole number. Ethan. 2. two. Okay. Ethan, how did you know it was 2? Because you looked maybe and only had to focus on the tenths place. Okay, so you looked here. Okay. And so, if you know how to estimate, you know that if, if it's below 5, then you estimate to the lowest number. I would agree. I love the explanation. Thank you. Now, 22, we need to round that to the nearest tens place. What would we estimate it to? Chloe? 20. 20. So, using our estimated factors, can someone tell me what is my estimated product? Olivia? 40. 40. How did you get 40, Olivia? So you focused on the basic fact. Oh, that was awesome. Now, we're not done yet. We now have to do the standard algorithm, which Kaylee said was the standard problem. What factors are we going to use for the standard algorithm? Cooper. Um, 2 and 31 and 22. Now, Cooper, you're correct, but what do you notice about this factor right here? I would agree. Cooper, why do we rename it? Why do we take that extra step? We don't get distracted by the decimal. Now, don't we put the decimal in at the end? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we do. But right now, we just want to focus on the standard multiplication. So we're going to multiply that by 22. Who would like to assist me with this problem? Jade, here we go. 2 times 1. 2. 2 times 3. 6. 2 times 2. 4. Now, Jade, this is an important step. What do I need to do to get ready for that second row of multiplication? Do you remember? Cross out the two. Cross out the two. Why would I cross out that two, Jade? Because it's in the ones place, and aren't we done with the ones? We're done with the ones now. What place are we going to actually go and work with? The tens. the tens place. I need someone to help me. Who's going to help me? Thomas, I see you. Two times one. Two times one. One. Check again. Two. Okay. Because anything times one equals one. Or anything. Equals itself. I knew what you meant. Mm -hmm. Two times three. Two times two. Two times two, four. Thank you. Now, someone help us. We've done the multiplication. How do we wrap up this problem? Charles. Uh, you're gonna add it. Okay, we're going to add up. These are considered the partial products, remember, because they go with the ones place and the tens place. Because two. two plus zero is six plus two. Good correction. Four plus six. Four plus six. Ten. 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 I like how you use that terminology. <coughs> One plus four. Five. Now, right now, it's going to say 5,082 hundredths in unit form. I need it expressed in standard form. Can someone tell me what does that mean? Alexis? We back the decimal back in. Oh, we put it back in. Okay, so where would the decimal go? Center and the hundredths go between zero and ten. Okay, I would agree. <coughs> Raise your hand if you need me. Yes. I, um, when we did the problem, since it was 22, it's just like the problem before it, but you added the zero to hold the place of the one. I like how that worked out for us. Questions you have right now on whether it's the estimating of the factors, renaming, or the standard algorithm. Okay, let's do another one. I like what I'm seeing with my participation. Keep it up. What do you guys notice about this problem compared to the last problem we just did? Mr. Dunn, what do you think? It's in the hundreds place. This one's in the hundreds place. What place was it in before? It was in the tens place. High five it. Yes, good job. Yeah. Now, I need someone to help me with my estimation of factors. Who would like to assist? Cole. Uh, so 2 and 31 hundredths, what are we going to round that to? Two. How did you know we're rounding it just to 2? Okay, keep going with it, Cole. Now, you could go two different ways with this next factor, Cole. Can you express both ways? So, you could do um, 20, uh, 220 or just 200. So, you rounded to what place in this round? What place value? Wait, what do you mean? What place value did you just round to? Okay, so if we express it in another way, and you said 200, what place value did you round to in that expression? Okay, would I accept either? Yes, unless it specifically tells you, you could do either of these and they would be accepted. So, let's find the estimated product to both sets of estimated factors. 2 times 220, what's the answer? Chloe. 440. Mm. 2 times 200. Alexis? 
400. Either of those would be accepted because I could see your thinking either way. Okay. Now, we now need to take and do a standard algorithm. What factors am I going to use for my standard algorithm? Cooper? Oh, you renamed it again for me? Man, that's two for two, sir. I like that. Does it look good so far, Cooper? Okay, well, I'm glad because that could have been stressful. Who would like to help me? Olivia, here we go. One times one. One times three. One times two. All right. Now, whoever helps me, this is a big step. I've got to do something pretty important over here. Hmm. Kaylee, what are you thinking? Put a zero where? Under the one, because that is in what place value? The ones, and we're done with the ones, right? So what place value are we going to go work with, Kaylee? The tens, thank you. So two times one, Jade, you're going to help me. What's two times one, sweetheart? Two. Two. Two times three, Jade? Two times two. Four. Thank you. Now, this one could get a little dicey. What do we still have to do? There's something really important we need to do here. Megan. Uh, cross the two, put two zeros I now have to put two zeros there? Okay, Megan, you have to explain. Why am I putting two zeros on that third row of multiplication? Remember, those zeros tell your brain what you've already done multiplication-wise. You've dealt with the ones place, the tens place, now what place are we going to work in? Hundreds. You're good. Thank you. All right. Who would like to help me finish it out here? Elena. Two times one. Two times three. Two times two. Elena, now that we're done with our multiplication, what can we do? Add. We're going to add up these partial products all the way across. Elena, here we go. 1 plus 0 plus 0. 3 plus 2. 2 plus 6 plus 2. Regroup the 1. 1 plus 4 plus 6. 1 plus 4. So before I express it in standard form, I'm going to express it in unit form. So it'll be 51,000, 51 hundredths. Can someone raise their hand and tell me how I could express that in standard form? How would I write that? Cool. Okay, so 510, uh, 510 and uh, 5100. Okay, because you have to put the decimal back in when you're expressing it in standard form, correct, Cole? Yes. yes. And where do you put it? Um, between, the between the zero and the five, because what place value do we want to land in? The hundredth place. The hundredth place. Awesome. Give me a thumbs up on how we're feeling with this.